Okay, projects for now, for today. Had this dropped off. And uh, she's twisted off inside there, so he wants me to try to get the bolt out so he can reuse the mirror. And the bigger job, the fun job, is going to be this one. This is the intake and exhaust manifold off of that John Deere D that we did the uh, all the head work on last winter. We tried to start it up and she backfired. And we finally did get it started up by belting it to another tractor and spinning there fast enough. And she did run, but on only on one cylinder of the two that it's supposed to fire on. And so we've got a little problem there. I told him that maybe looks of things it was firing back out the intake as much as it was coming out the exhaust. He's running a three-quarter choke to get her to run at all. So, that's where that manifold went. You can see she's burned out. Now, we'll get ourselves a prop here. Set that manifold up. Somewhat flat. We'll cut off axles are good for that. Now, put our straight edge across here. And we don't really, I eh, don't really see any light across there, but she won't go over to here, so we bring her up to there, and uh, yeah. And we stuck a feeler gauge in there, and about 35,000. So, it was probably warped a bit before, because it only bolts on the later ones they updated, and they put more holes in here through the casting, but on these old ones they just run perimeter bolts, so they did tend to warp and stuff. They run kerosene and stuff in them distillate they used to call it and they designed them like this to run the intake in through here to heat the mixture up enough to make a burn so they were tend to breaking and cracking and going anyways he had done some brazing on here but I told him we'd probably redo that because uh, it's not like it's the best in the west here and we don't want to have to do it after we plane the manifold then just warp it all again. We got to do it all over again. Do that enough times to get out of the material to plane off. So we're going to go to work and uh, redo that braze job. Get this smoothed out. And then we'll set her up in the mill and in the brown and sharp. And uh, take a few thousands off. We'll get her straight. And then uh, we imagine she's going to run a bit better after that. So anyways, we'll bring you back as we go. Okay, we got the manifold cleaned up some here and ground up. I don't know how well you can see it there. The uh, crack is cracked right across here and right through there. Basically that whole piece is broke off. Stuck a little bit of brass it's still in there. Let's see the where I took the die grinder and cleaned her out a bit. So now we got her in this setup here. We got an angle iron clamped to the bench. Got the bottom of it clamped with a couple of cant twists through the intake port. We've got uh, a pair of vice grips out to the block of steel that it's clamped to, and then we got the top of it clamped there with the vice grip so what we're going to do is heat up the brass see if we can melt enough of it that we can suck that manifold in as tight as we can because you can see the see the gap there if we get her just right we want to try to eliminate that gap as much as possible so we don't have to take a whole bunch of off the surface to get her straight okay we got the manifold breezed up here now there's other cracks in it here, and there's basically the crack down inside there. We got her all brazed up here. So she's looking looking decent if we can get any light down in there. And clean the flux and stuff off it. She's all brazed up good. Then we made a plate to go on where the carburetor would go on the manifold. Right there. And we put two socket head bolts in so they're down flush. 
put four half inch holes in it so we can bolt it to the table. Then we'll probably put some more supports in it. That'll give us an initial way to mount it on the mill. And with all of our clamping and stuff that we did to try to mitigate the warp, we've got this down to about 22. So we've gained, uh, well, it was 35 to begin with. We got it down to 22. So we gained, what, 13 thou on the warp here. So we're going to get in the mill. We're going to tram it from, we can get the light to pick up any better, from one end to the other, from this end to that end, get those equal so that we don't aren't taking it all off of one end and end up losing a lot of our material here. So that should mitigate it. There's nothing critical on it for angles or anything like that. That's just the exhaust coming out that end and the carburetor hangs off the bottom. There's nothing else to hook up to it to make it critical if the angle's a little different or the dimensions are a little different. So we're going to take it over to the mill and start mounting it up. We'll bring you back. Okay, we're over here on the brown and sharp, and we're tramming this uh, in. We got our clamp down here with our mounting plate fixture, and we'll get you in on the bell indicator. So right there, we're about plus three, and we'll run across. To the other end. You see our highest point there is only, well let's see if we go back here to what should be the lowest. Yeah we're about 18 thou so we've gone down from 35 thou to 18 just when we're brazing it. So that's pretty good. And we're right about on zero there, so we're only out by about three thou from end to end. So we should be able to clean her up without too much trouble. We got our uh, big uh, shell mill in there, so we'll go drop, take your dial indicator off, and drop her down, and do a couple of passes, and see what happens. Okay, we got the manifold all planed up here. Breeze and dressed up a bit there. So she's looking a little bit proper. And yeah, knock a piece of steel on the floor there. So that should work. And if you look down, I know you can't really see in there, but that that gap for that big of a port there, you get two fingers through there. Just barely. Not even completely. And the same thing on that side. There's huge back pressure in there. That whole intake here, that that wall has got to be at least half an inch thick in there. So it's no wonder. <laughs> Size of that exhaust port there. Well, I can put three fingers in there wide. In here you can barely get a finger down either side in this port around the where this intake tube runs out to the where the carburetor mounts on there. And that one there, boys, you get your fingers stuck in there if you stuck them in too far. So it looks like big ports in the six and three quarter bore engine, seven inch stroke. He's got to push all the exhaust out through them. She's uh <laughs> no wonder she had back pressure trying to blow out through the intake. Anyways, job's done. Customer just gotta come pick her up.